Hello and welcome to the first episode of a new segment that I'm going to do on my channel which is called A Recipe for Disaster. Now, in the chateau, for those of you who don't know, I live in the Chateau de la Lande. I am not extremely well known for my culinary skills. So, my idea is I'm going to do this new segment called A Recipe for Disaster. I'm going to pick a recipe and I'm just going to do it. And I think that's the way to improve any skill, is just to spend time doing it. Today, there's only seven of us in the house and that means that we can use the Heron plates. Now, these are Heron. Uh, Heron is a Hungarian porcelain manufacturer, and these are called the Rothschild plates. As this is Hungarian porcelain, why not make a Hungarian dish? So, I'm going to be making a goulash. A Hungarian goulash is like a stew, and I love stews. So, I am very excited to be cooking this because the weather outside is absolutely terrible. It's very windy, and <laughs> it's raining, and it's cold, and I think this is gonna be just the thing that we need to warm us up. I'm going to be hollowing out these breads so that we can serve this to you inside that. Now, all the filling I'm gonna put aside because Maria is going to be cooking something with that in the next couple of days. And I will be using this, and we'll be serving it as a soup bowl on the plate. I am insisting on using these plates. <laughs> That's why we're doing this and it's also a traditional Hungarian way of serving a goulash. As far as I've been able to find on the internet. If I'm making any mistake, just please let me know in the comments down below because this is a journey that we're all gonna go on together because I do not know what I'm doing. I'm just simply gonna follow a recipe and we'll see what happens. <laughs> I think what we need to start with is a glass of wine. At least that's what I need. <laughs> and this wine is Chateau La Gorse. Chateau La Gorse is owned by our friends Ed and Anna and this is their wine, it's delicious and I am very excited to try a bit of it. By the way, Ed and Anna also have a YouTube channel called Bordeaux Life, if you'd like to look at their channel. Just a small glass. Cheers. I've just been reading the recipe and it's only got four steps, which sounds easy enough. But the second point, it already is suggesting that the beef and the onion, etc., all need to be cut up and it doesn't tell me to do that beforehand. So I'm just gonna go through, cut up some onions. Under optional, it also says carrots and potatoes, which I'll be doing as well. I'm going to start with the meat. I've never worked with meat like this before. This layer, I think I need to cut off. I guess I'm just gonna take a knife to it. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Question. Yeah. What the f am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just cut the membrane off. Try and make incisions here first. There you go. Yeah, then like a violin. I feel like I'm mutilating it, that's why. Well, you are, but it's okay. <laughs> Just cut around all the fat and the joint joints. Like this bit, you definitely don't want. You're doing great, sweetie. <laughs> you can do it. So, dinner at 10 pm? Probably. I'm trying. It's a learning curve, a very steep learning curve. It said. Cut it into cubes of two and a half centimeters. This is one piece. Do we think that that needs to be cut any smaller? It's about an inch, right? And then that sort of, I think that's fine. I feel like I'm butchering this meat and not necessarily in a good way. You won't be seeing this, but I've been doing this for an hour and this is only the first one. I don't exactly know what I'm doing wrong. I mean, I must be doing something wrong. Maybe the knife is too dull. Maybe, I mean, it's definitely my technique as well. <laughs> now I know it's my first time doing this and I will get better and there'll be less waste, but it didn't sit well with me that we weren't using this much. So Maria told me not to worry because she won't use it to make a beef soup. We're setting the meat aside and now we're cutting up the onions. The recipe calls for two onions, but again, I'm making one and a half times the recipe. So I'm gonna need three medium sized onions. Prep the beef stock. So I've got two cubes of beef stock, and then I'm gonna add just over 700 milliliters of water to that. That's three cups of water. I'm 
Setting it aside, I can finally start assembling. So, a big pan is what we need. And now I need butter. Two teaspoons of butter. After almost two hours of cooking, or prepping rather, it's finally time for the first step of the recipe, which says, in a large pot, melt butter and add onion. Cook till translucent and stir in the caraway seeds and paprika and mix well. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm using my hedgehog spatula. I've just realized that the hedgehog spatula has got all the conversions on it. That would have been useful about three minutes ago. As the butter has melted, we're going to add the onion. We're cooking the onion until it's translucent. And then I'm gonna add the paprika powder and the caraway seeds. For the caraway seeds, we needed one and a half teaspoons, but I only had about one. And for the paprika powder, we needed three tablespoons, which I did have. I'm adding the caraway seeds and the paprika. Okay, that's sticking to everything. It said mix well. I feel like we need more liquid for that. I'm going to make the executive decision to take it off the heat whilst I'm prepping the meat because there is hardly any liquid after all that powder and I'm scared it will burn. Step two is in a bowl, dredge the beef stew with flour. Add the beef to the onion mixture and cook for about two to three minutes. I've got my bowl with the meat. Add one fourth of a cup of flour times one and a half. I'm very lucky because I just had a little rummage because I thought we had these. That means I don't need to keep converting them. One fourth of a cup and about another half one of that. Then I'm going to mix it well now. I'm gonna be honest, I don't believe that this is gonna work well with all the paprika powder in there already. So what I'll do is I'll add some more butter to it before I put these in. I believe the beef is now fully drenched, so I'll add a bit more butter, turn this back on, and add this in. Okay, I'm adding the beef to the onions now. I'm gonna cook it for two to three minutes. It seems very dry. I know we're gonna add a lot of bouillon in a bit, but it doesn't seem right. The next step is to slowly add the beef broth, which we made earlier. So I'm gonna add one fourth of a cup first. Just do it more than that. To lift the brown bits off the bottom of the pan. That's what we're doing now. I think we should have had a wooden spatula. It's telling me to add the diced tomatoes, potatoes and carrots if using salt and pepper. Now, I will be adding all of that. I just need to chop the carrots and the potatoes. Turn this down a little bit. I've got half a cup. That's the biggest one I can find, so... That is... One, well, it was a half, so this is one. One and a half. One teaspoon of salt, one fourth teaspoon of pepper. We need about four potatoes, I think, and about four carrots. Half a cup of carrots, one cup of carrots two and a quarter cups of carrots, and one piece of meat. When I was a kid, when my father was cooking carrots, he always gave me and my little brother a raw carrot, washed, obviously, like we just nibble on. I have to say, it smells delicious. I'm not sure there's gonna be enough food for seven people. I might chop some potatoes quickly. Having looked at what one cup of potatoes approximately looks like, this to me looks like about four cups of potatoes, which I'm gonna eyeball it at this point, and ooh, that's hot, put it in. The final step in the recipe is stir and bring to a boil, cover, then reduce to the simmer for about one and a half to two hours or until tender. I've moved it to the smallest hob, reduced it to the simmer, so now it's time to lay the table. In the dining room, I'm debating which tablecloth to use. Now, this is a tablecloth I bought a while ago at a brocante. It's beautiful and it's huge, so it probably will fit the table, but I am not quite sure if it goes with the plates. Let me rephrase that. I don't think it goes with the plates. I think maybe a green tablecloth will look better. So this is the only green tablecloth that we have, but I don't think the style is quite right. So I'm wondering if this one, which is 
not green, but beautiful yellow might do the trick. I like this a lot more than the pink because I feel like these little bits pick out the, the detail in the pattern here. And also the color picks out all the yellows in the plate. I'm gonna use these charger plates. They got bits of blue in the plates. It's got another, what, 45 minutes to go and I had a little taste and it wasn't bad. It was quite good actually. But it just wasn't what I had in mind when I was thinking of the goulash. So what I did is I added a little bit of smoky paprika powder, salt, pepper, more of it, and added wine because I had well over three quarters of a bottle left of wine that I was drinking. So I added some of that wine into it. I'm cooking that out now. I think some Hungarians might be turning in their graves at the moment. I'm very sorry about that, but it smells very nice. So the table's almost done. I just need to add the napkins and I am thinking I'm gonna add the matching napkins to the tablecloth, which are different colors. Soft blue, a pink, and the same color as the tablecloth, which I think works perfectly because it picks out the blue and the yellows and the pinks in all the butterflies and the bugs. It's really dark outside. It's just gone eight. And I, thankfully it stopped raining. So I've got scissors. I'm on my way to cut some flowers. I'm going with pinks and whites to tie in the other napkins. Maybe a little bit of yellow. Let's see. This one looks beautiful. Okay, so that's finally done. <laughs> I think it looks really good. So it's just a weekday dinner. It's not a very special dinner, but I mean, it's how special you make it, right? So I'm gonna call everyone to dinner. I'm gonna start plating the food. I've hollowed out the breads ready for assembly. So for plating the food, I'm just gonna take one of these, I hollowed out earlier, fill it with goulash, creme fraiche, and then parsley. Filming and plating are not two things that should be mixed. I'm also wondering if I made enough food. <laughs> okay, these are big balls. I think that looks really pretty, so I'm quickly gonna pop the lid. They smell very good. Thank you. It does actually smell great and it looks incredible. This is so exciting. I can't believe you did this. I'm actually in shock. Mm -hmm. You are traumatized. <laughs> it's a long day for Philip. <laughs> and then for wine, which I'm just gonna straw for myself. <laughs> It's good. Mm -hmm. It's a miserable day like today. It's perfect, yeah. I'm not paying anyone to say this. There's not enough money, money in the world to pay me. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Philip. Seriously. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs>